Well, hello everybody, Wooden Railway Edward here, and today it's going to be a little bit of a different video for my channel. And I know I've said that a lot, but today it really, I really do mean it. This video is a layout video, obviously from the title and the thumbnail that you saw. And if you know me, you know that I am not a big fan of layouts. Now, I appreciate when other people make layouts, I think it's cool and all, but I'm just not a layout guy. I build sets first and foremost. And I've only ever built three or four layouts in my day, in my entire lifetime when I've had Thomas Wooden Railway. And that is mostly due to my lack of track and, unfortunately, some interesting destinations. I only have maybe a dozen destinations in total. And that is disappointing to me. I would want more. But the problem is track. I just never really had a lot of at least name brand track when I was little. And destinations, I just had more trains. I didn't have that many destinations. So I always built sets. I didn't really ever build layouts that much. However, today, actually, it's unfortunate also that a couple days ago, I sprained my ankle. So I haven't been able to do a lot of stuff outside. So to remedy that, I ha decided, you know what, we're going to build a layout inside to give me something to do. And this was very last minute. I just built this in an hour, dressed it up with some engines and uh, accessories, and here we are with this layout video. So I hope you enjoy this video. I think it's going to be pretty fun. I apologized um, up front for maybe some shadows or bad lighting in this video. As it is nighttime. Usually I try to film my videos in uh, the morning time. But today I just wanted to just get this video out and done. Hopefully it won't be too much of a stress to edit or upload or whatever. Because I always have some trouble with editing and uploading. But anyway, to the actual video now. We're done with the long intro. Here is Thomas at Tidmouth Sheds, and there's Douglas and James. And I decided for this layout to start it at Tidmouth Sheds. And it actually is in this corner of my room that I usually, or not my room, my basement, I should say, that I really don't uh, use for Thomas. I actually have a desk here now that I do homework or whatever I do on there. And over here, that's actually, you might recognize where I film all my sets. And there's actually a lot of open space right here, if I just do a once-over of the layout. And you can see there's a couple bits of furniture, a table right there. Oh, there's my Wii. Shout out to all the Wii users, I still use it. Only console I have, besides my Switch. But anyway, back to this. Here is the middle of the room, and there usually is a coffee table right here, where there's some Lego bins and stuff like that. But if I remove that, which I'm not going to do all the time because that wastes a lot of space in other parts of the house, but I do have a lot more room. So I could build more expansive sets, and that might be something I do in the future. Now, if you notice over here in this little corner right here, this is where I used to have my dock set up for the first iterations of my series. And the lighting used to be really poor right here, and it still is, as you can see, my giant shadow right there. The engines and people of Sodor must be pretty scared right now if they were sentient with a big giant shadow on their wall. Um, but anyway, I did use this for my dock set, and I really don't use it anymore. So it's nice to get back into maybe using it for some Thomas videos, maybe showing it off in videos. So anyway, I decided to start off at Tidmouth Sheds. I thought that's a good starting point. And there is Thomas, James, and Donald. I might have called him Douglas. It is Donald over there. And I think we're going to go right first. So if we do go right, we can see that there is Billy, and he is quite silly right now, excuse the pun, because he is derailed. And there is the circus train. Harvey is trying to clear up the mess, but if you notice, there's a circus train, there is no circus animals. Billy has done something really dumb, and now the circus animals are have run amok across Sodor. I did try to incorporate a little story with this layout. It might be a little corny to some people, but I thought it was fun to do. So, Billy has let loose all the circus animals, the wild animals that are now running around Sodor. So let's see if we can spot them during the video. But anyway, if you continue the line that Harvey is on, and you keep going straight, you come to Lower Tidmouth Station. And this is actually a Trackmaster Station, but I think it works pretty well, and it's scaled pretty well for Thomas Wooden Railway. So, even though I try to use mostly Thomas Wooden Railway things on my layout, I think that this station fits in generally with the theme. So here is Percy with Annie and Clarabelle. Instead of having Thomas pull Annie and Clarabelle, I thought it would be nice to have Percy pull them. 
So here's Bulgy alongside Percy. And if you take this siding right here, here's Daisy. And then in, in her vain and pompous way, she's at the engine wash probably uh, getting clean. She hasn't done any passenger runs, I presume, but she's just trying to get clean for whatever reason. It's Daisy. You don't question her. Here is my water tower that I uh, built a while back, I think almost two years ago now, for my remake James Goes Too Far. And I am not a DIY guy. I'm maybe the worst possible person to do custom. So don't blame me if this looks a little bit wonky, but I think actually it turned out okay. I just used some paper right here and cardboard ends, and it is a little tall. I might fix that in the future, but for right now, I think it's pretty good. So if we continue the line Percy is on, and we go around this bend right here, this straight piece of track and a bend, I've tried to keep this layout pretty concise. I don't have that many straight pieces of track, so to um, remedy that, I've tried to make it pretty condensed and have a lot of switches and uh, curved pieces of track. But there is a little bit of an open area right here where Harold is. He's probably just surveying the engines, making sure everything's present and correct, as he might say. And here we come to a three-way switch. And I think we're going to go left on this three-way switch. So here's the docks. And yes, I still have a Mega Bloks Cranky. And don't judge me, because honestly, I think this Mega Bloks Cranky is one of the best iterations of Cranky in merchandise. This hook that he has is really useful if you take string or rubber bands and attach it to packages like that. And I think it's honestly 10 times better than the magnet. So honestly, I have no intentions of getting an actual Thomas Wooden Railway Cranky anytime soon. This Megabox one will suffice for the needs that I uh, use him for. And I actually use this dock setup in a very old layout I made. I didn't film it on YouTube, but it was one of the few layouts I did make a while back when I got this in 2020. And I think, honestly, it's a pretty cool piece of track. It's just a big wooden slab with uh, two lines across it. And I thought it would be a cool way to do the docks. So here's Arthur with some troublesome trucks and the critter cars, a little callback to Edward in the exhibit. And there is Salty on the other line. A blue package over there, and here is Lori One with another brown package. There was a couple workmen. There's a couple Lego figures on the layout. I didn't go crazy with the amount of figures I added. I do have a lot more, but as I said, I did want to be sparing with the amount of time I was spending on this layout and um, dressing it up for this video. So here is Bear, Bill and Ben, and um, what is that? Bill is under this gantry crane, I guess you could say, or rather... I think that's more gantry crane since it moves back and forth. But this over-the-track crane is actually a wood crane, and it doesn't really fit in with the Thomas Wooden Railway stuff, but it looks good enough, and it actually was derived from a Thomas Wooden Railway design. So the unpainted um, cab area, I guess you could say, of the crane is not too jarring, although the snow I really could do without. I wish it didn't come with the snow. But anyway, if we follow Ben's line right here, it curves around past Jack and a little tree right there. And it comes to this T-switch. And, oh, look, here is our first animal. Here is a zebra. And this zebra is, I guess, having a chat with Stanley, Wilbert, Ryan, Mavis, and Stephanie. Now, I don't know who really has done this, but I do have memories of watching layout videos and that at some random shed, there's just a bunch of characters that couldn't be fit on other parts of the layout. And I think that's a pretty cool idea, honestly. So I mashed together some characters that didn't really fit in otherwise, but are from different eras and I think kind of look cool together. So having these characters together, I think, at least, is pretty cool. And this is the Melissa and Doug shed that I was talking about earlier. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just... It really could be better, and to relegate it to Vickers Town Sheds, I guess you could call it, is good enough for me. Hopefully that zebra isn't going to do any damage to these engines, because actually zebras can be very dangerous. Fun fact, you always learn something new on the Wooden Railway Edward channel. Anyway, if we come along past that T-switch to this little section of the layout on the outer skirts of the layout is... Here's Henry, and a little Henry's Forest representation, I guess you could say. And it's um, the log company, I guess, the Sudor Wood Company. And Henry's just getting some logs. 
And over there is the Spotlight Lori and Cherry Picker, maybe doing some work on the building right there. And if we follow Henry's line, we come to Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. And it looks like there's some person behind Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. That's a little interesting. That definitely won't come up in a future episode. But here's Dennis, and this calls back a little bit to Thomas's Day Off, the remake I made, because Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory has to be the favorite destination in my collection because it is so helpful in set dressing. You do not know how many times I put this in the background of basically every set just to make it look more industrial or um, to just give it more of a, a lived-in and busy feel, especially the back part where it just looks like any industrial building. So there's Patrick. I don't know if I mentioned him before, but there is Patrick. A box car, a cargo car, and this little uh, rectangular, little flat roof building right there. That's also a helpful building with building sets. And here's Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is one of my newest items that I got. I actually got her in a lot in May with, um, of course, Elizabeth, Mabel, and... A musical caboose, another one. I already have one, but it's all right. And I think she's in great condition, and it was only $15, so I think it was well worth it. And here is a Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory package, and it's fitting that uh, she's at Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. She's probably not too happy about it, although maybe it's better than pudding. Anyway, if we follow the line that Dennis isn't on on the Switch, we can see that here's Birdie and Edward at Ellsbridge Station. Now, of course, this layout is not in any way um, cohesive in terms of locations, of where Sodor locations actually are. If you pay attention to any map, the Unlucky Tug or uh, Audrey or Mitten Made, I, I don't even know. It's I know, at least, that it's not accurate to any of those maps. However, I did think it would be a good idea to have Edward with Eldsbridge Station, as I believe it's the station he actually runs, if I'm not mistaken. But he has old slow coach right there, and there's just a couple of passengers. This Elder Bridge station has served me well. I've had it for a very long time, and that and the only thing I'm missing of it is the platform. It didn't ever come with the platform on eBay, but I just used some uh, track risers as a platform, and I think it works out well. So I have this little design of these, I guess you could call them, I'm not really sure what you call these switches, but I think it's cool to have these two tracks um, sort of, split from one to two in this little area, maybe if a train's passing or dropping off passengers. But anyway, before you get to Edward, there's this little switch, and here's my representation of the yard. And the brown turntable, quite honestly, I forgot I had the brown turntable. And I only bought it a couple months ago. But when I was getting stuff out for this video, I was ecstatic. I honestly was shocked that I had the brown turntable, which sounds a little um, pompous or maybe... Um, arrogant that I didn't remember that I had it or maybe even a little careless but honestly I really forgot I had the brown turntable and that just shows you how much I've been paying attention to my collection in the last couple months and I hope to get back into Thomas not that I've gotten out of it just I've had a lot of other stuff to do but I'm very happy to have it and I think it actually makes the yard look pretty good so here's diesel on the turntable and under that um, little bridge right there there's Fergus the aquarium cars the Chinese dragon, and Molly over here. And here's another little diorama I set up. There's a constable um, looking after this elephant right here. I guess the elephant took interest in the Chinese dragon. And there's also a dynamite package next to those three. So I feel like if I'm Molly, or at least a driving fireman, I'd be hightailing it out of here. Because whatever mix of stuff that's doing, I really don't want to be a part of. Anyway... If you take this track adjacent to Diesel right here, that just goes back to where Ben was under this little bridge right here. And if you take Edward's line and follow it under the bridge again, it goes to Whiff and there's Isabella. And that's the gantry crane I was talking about. And that is not official Thomas Wooden Railway. But I think it's pretty cool. And honestly, someday I might color it to be more um, muted colors, maybe brown or gray or something like that, just to make it fit in better with the other... Um, destinations and whatever that I have on this layout. But it has also, in addition to Elsbury Station, this has served me well over the years, and I've used it in many videos. Not so much nowadays, but even uh, in Edward in the Exhibit, I believe, for the doc set, I still used it. So I use it every now and again. But if we follow 
whiff and we take this third switch and pass Harold. Here we come to Douglas and there's the one stop sign I own. I thought it would be um, appropriate to put the stop sign here since this is probably the most chaotic part of the layout with how many switches and nonsense that's going on right here. Byron is perhaps having a conversation with Douglas and as Douglas has stopped at this stop sign, there's not really any engines coming or going. I guess I should cover that up this switch, uh, or rather up this incline right here over the suspension bridge, is Boko. And Boko is pulling a pretty interesting train. It has um, the blasting cap car, uh, Sama log car, a giggling troublesome truck, a garbage car, Fred, and a musical caboose. I think that's a pretty interesting consist of trucks. And if you go down that line, it just loops back around to where Maui is. So also, Boko probably shouldn't be going this direction, because whatever's going on right here is probably not the best area to be in at this current moment. But anyway, if we go back to where I was talking about, if you go straight, you see that you come to a couple of switches, and across one of the switches, if you just keep going straight, it goes under this little plastic bridge where Duck and the recycling cars are. Now, I know these don't really fit in context that much, but... That was one of the last engines and rolling stock pieces that I had, so I thought, why not put it on the layout? It, you got to have Duck on the layout, you know? I'm a big fan of Duck. I know some pe people aren't, but I like Duck. Anyway, if you follow this line that, Dennis, you could go straight and go on the, around this curve to this um, plastic bridge right here, you see that there's Toby and Henrietta balanced on this plastic bridge. And this is actually something that I've been doing for so long with my layouts, and of course, I haven't built that many layouts, but whenever I do, I try to include this as a little nod to past layouts that I've made. And I can't remember the last time that I didn't include this on something I was building. So yeah, that's just a little homage to stuff I've done in the past. If you fall under that line and keep going straight on this three-switch uh, three set of points, I guess you could say, here's Spencer resting in the yard. And here's the third animal. Here's a bear next to Spencer. Spencer's probably trying to get a little bit of sleep. And this bear has just wrecked his whole plan for the day. And um, I don't think Spencer's too amused. Something about it, even though he has that smirk on his face, I don't think he's too amused about that. But anyway, if you take this left um, set of points right here, if you take the left track, here is Murdoch at Hat Street Crossing with Caroline crossing over. And Murdoch, I think, has a pretty interesting train. He has rickety, scruffy, the gray-faced troublesome truck, the troublesome brake van, and the spiteful brake van. And I think that's a pretty interesting train um, when all is said and done. I don't really have that many trucks, so whenever I can use them in, in an interesting lineup like this, I think it's pretty cool. I would love to get more troublesome trucks, especially ballast trucks or maybe gray-faced troublesome trucks, just to add to the amount of rolling stock I have in my collection. But that's a journey for another day, and a video for another day. Maybe that'll come in the future, who knows. And over here, here's the last animal, and it's not as bad as it looks. It's not like these guys were mauled by this lion right here. They just fell over in the, oh, the third guy fell over, I guess. This lion's really hungry. And they've just fallen over when I've been stomping around the basement right here filming this layout video. They don't intend to be fallen over, but I'm not going to fix them because I know they're just going to fall over again. But this lion right here is just out and about on Sodor, so Billy should probably get on finding these animals because this is starting to get dangerous. And uh, I don't see any lion tamer around, so that's not very good for these workmen right here. They better start running. And if you follow the, the Hat Street crossing line under where Gordon is with the express coaches... You come to Oliver. He has the fog cars with Oliver, or not with Oliver. Oliver has the fog cars with Toad. And there's Butch in this little open patch of grass right here. And if you go past where Douglas and Byron are, and you go up this line by the Natford covered bridge, here's Gordon with the express coaches. I would like to get more express coaches in the future. That's something I'm working on. And then we've worked our way back. And here's Derek with George and a tree, and he's just pulling some Cory cars. And then we come back to where Thomas, James, and Donald are at the start of this layout at Tidmouth Sheds. So I think actually that we've covered everything on this layout. I hope I didn't miss anything. I don't think I did. Um, I've done this 
a couple takes, and I'm just trying to see what one is best. So I think this is the third take I've done of this, and I think actually it turned out pretty well. So it is getting pretty late at night right now. As I said, I like to film my videos in the morning, but, you know, hopefully the lighting isn't too atrocious for you guys and you don't have too many gripes about it. I'd like to get this video out, video out relatively quickly. Um, I've been talking for a long time, so my speech is starting to suffer as a result. It's been a pretty long day. And having a sprained ankle is just no fun. You're not able to do anything or cooped up indoors. And this sparked my interest for Thomas and Friends a little bit. I did have a couple roadblocks when making this layout. I wanted to quit a couple times, but it did only take an hour. And when I really got into it, I did get into it. And I was able to finagle it in a way that everything fit together and made a lot of sense. So I'm really happy with this layout, quite honestly. I think it turned out pretty well. And I don't really think I have that much more to say about it. Honestly, I might make another layout in the future, maybe even in the next couple of days once I tear down this one. Because I think even though I really use sets, that layouts are kind of fun. So I think we're going to end at my favorite character, Edward, right here. And I'd just like to thank you guys for watching this video. I know that maybe it's been a little bit um, shaky here and there, camera-wise, both literally and figuratively. Maybe I've just not explained the layout very well. But overall, I think it's been a pretty good experience for me. It's been a pretty short experience for me, obviously. That I didn't take too much time building this, as I just don't have that much track. And after building this layout, I really need more track. So I did put out... Um, a Q and A, uh, well, not a Q and A, but a question asking where I could find more track, and hopefully that will lead to some uh, results where I can get some more track. I don't really care if it's off brand or not. It could be off brand, it could be name brand. As you can see, I have very little actual Thomas Wooden Railway track. Most of it's off brand stuff. But as I said, overall, I'm pretty happy with this layout. And stay tuned for more videos. My series is chugging along. Hopefully, eventually. My series will come out in its rebooted form after the reboot, the reboot of the reboot. That's my series now. But I'm the guy who never gets past episode four at this point. But I hope to get more motivation for that soon. And we got the whole summer ahead of us, guys. So especially for people up here um, in more northern the United States, we get off until maybe the middle of September. But with a sprained ankle, I have a lot of time to get stuff done, and maybe work towards getting an episode out this summer. So, without further ado, I think it's time to end this video. Thank you for watching. I really appreciated the support over the little while. We're on our way to 1K subs, which is just insane. And I hope someday to get monetized. I know it's a long way away, but if you could just keep watching my videos, and I will keep providing videos, I think we can get to it someday. But anyway, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.